And the Robotech soundtrack. Uh, last year, uh, we had covered uh, at Long Beach Comic Con how we had found all this material, and we were working on it for a future soundtrack, but we, uh, we didn't have a handle on exactly what that future soundtrack was going to be. Well, that's come out uh, earlier this year. Uh, this is the photo we showed off before. Uh, we actually, this is actually one of our favorites because uh, of the, you know, the obvious pun. Uh, this is the master tape for uh, the masters that we've used for previous uh, soundtrack collections. And that's what it looks like. Uh, on the left is the master tape that we have been using all along. It's a half inch tape uh, that we have done for uh, producing the digitally remastered uh, CD sets that were released in two, up until 2005. However, we found a two-inch tape on the right, which was had the same catalog number, and it had on the listing the same track names. And check this out. That's how the tapes look when we unboxed it. Now, what would be the difference in the half-inch tape versus the two-inch tape? More tracks. More tracks. Yeah. Uh, no, not more tracks. It was the exact same tracks. Quality? No. Same. Well, actually, here's the funny thing about analog: is analog does not compartmentalize into a you know 44 hertz, 48 hertz, whatever. And analog is just recorded the way it is, and then when you uh, sample it, uh, that's when you get the uh, mega uh, the hertz rate. We actually sampled it when we uh, had it transferred uh, by the Restoration Studio. They actually future proofed it a little bit for us by actually capturing it at 88.2 hertz. That's double the frequency of um, uh, the tapes used for, uh, or double the frequency used for CDs. And a lot of home videos, 5.1, is usually mastered at 48 hertz. This was done at 88. Uh, and this is what was actually stored. Everything was stored as 24 individual instruments. It was the same tracks, all the instruments were separated out. This allows us to do something we could never do before, which is karaoke versions of songs. Because oh, no. we can now drop, you know, uh, the singer out. Uh, and so, you know, if you, uh, if you thought, uh, you know, uh, hearing stage fright uh, ten times from uh, Min May was hard, now you're going to hear all your friends sing stage fright ten times. <laughs> and so this is uh, the first release that we had come out earlier this year. Uh, it had unpublished alternate versions of Little <coughs> Wind. And so, uh, uh, we will lose. <laughs> uh, here's actually a guitar solo that had never been published before. Uh, <laughs> somehow, but this was on one of the master tapes, unused, and so this is uh, now included. Oh, before we go any further, and also uh, we had an alternate uh, version of another song right here. All right, The Way to Love. Take one. Somewhere in the new generation, <laughs> playing on a radio somewhere in the background. Mm. And that's, you know, the yeah. only other appearance of it. Yeah, so probably what happened at the end was, oops, we never used the song, let's uh, shoehorn it in somewhere. Yeah. But now, finally, we've got it on its own in a good presentation. And uh, also here, uh, this is the second EP that came out this year. So we, instead of this giant all-in-one set, and there was so much audio restoration work being done, we didn't want you guys to wait forever. We've actually been releasing these incrementally. So as we've had the work done, 
different collections of different songs, uh, all the different variations of it uh, for uh, you to enjoy now. Anybody recognize the cover? River. That's right. <laughs> but you, you guys remember George Sullivan, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, how many of you own a Thriller album? Do you remember the little, uh, the, little, uh, the little baby tiger when you unfolded the liner notes? Yeah. All right, if you're a Sentinels fan and you unload, open up these liner notes, you're going to get a huge kick out of it. So. All right, uh, here we go. It's you I miss It's you who's on my mind It's you I kind of hate So this was one of the super rare songs people uh, complained to us how come it was never in any soundtrack album before Well, here it is guys uh, And another song Right here when it used to be on the beta tape that came out in 1984. Uh, this is the, yeah, anyway, this is one of the reasons why the song was not released with lyrics in all previous uh, soundtrack releases. But, you know, we want to be completists here. And it was actually, you know, good music work, a little campy, but uh, it's there. Now, uh, one more thing we've uh, found is Sentinel's music that was never released uh, on CD before. A lot of people thought this was lost in ages. Well, we found them all. Uh... So that was uh, that was the uh, Alpha Beta uh, link-up scene, and that was music that had been lost for many, many years. We finally found it, and what's more interesting is. We've even found music that was never released before because, as many of you know, Sentinels was intended to be an ongoing television series. It was canceled. So there was music written for episodes that had not been produced yet, and we uh, found that all. So there were finally uh, a lot of materials that almost was at the risk of being lost is finally going to make its way out. Now, of course, this is the part that uh, I'm sure uh, some of you have been waiting for. What's next for Rotec? Yes. Yeah. Uh, many of you who follow the internet religiously uh, know that there uh, is a live action film over at Warner Brothers Pictures. Uh, they haven't started shooting yet. Uh, they've got producers attached to it. Many of you uh, were actually surprised by how many people still get surprised. You know, they, they actually come up to the Rogue Tech X fan booth and they actually say, Oh my goodness, I, I, I didn't know Rogue, you know, Toby McGuire was attached to this. You know, there's people who are surprised for me. So for those of you not already aware, uh, the producers attached to it, Akiva Goldsman, uh, wow. Jason Netter, Toby McGuire. Uh, some of you may know Toby McGuire as a gentleman who made a billion dollars for uh, the Spider-Man franchise. Uh, Lawrence Kasdan, uh, credited with uh, writing Empire Strikes Back. I'm sure everybody's wondering whether he's going to write Star Wars 7. And, uh, uh, Alfred Gow, Miles Miller, the guys who wrote Spider-Man 2, uh, Tom Rob Smith, New York Times bestseller. There's uh, definitely been work done on this. Um, you know, I can't uh, go any further into it just simply because uh, they're not at a state where they're ready to uh, release more about the film yet. But uh, uh, the road tech merchandising rights have also been picked up by WB, so those rights are presently over at Warner Brothers Pictures. And uh, many fans also are aware that uh, we have been working on uh, Shadow Rising. However, there was another project uh, that took uh, precedence in front of that, which was uh, something that Carl was working on right when he passed away. And uh, this was something Carl wanted to work on since 1986. Uh, what we've got here is a screenshot of a OVA from Tatsunoko called Love Little Life, Must Be the Love Little Life. Now, how many of you heard of Must Be the Love Little Life? 
Okay, if you come to the exhibit show floor, you're going to see a big Love Live Live poster, except it says Robotech Love Live Live. This is some restoration work that was done on it afterwards. You'll notice that it was very green floor, cleaned it up after, and this is the result. We've, uh, we decided to extend the same restoration work that we had done to the original Robotech television series to Moss Speed, a Love Live Live. Uh, because, you know, uh, likewise, it was shot and filmed back then. It needs some restoration work uh, to clean it up for uh, digital. And uh, here's an example episode. You'll see the split screen of the work we have done into restoring the video. So you don't have interlacing jitter, you know, uh, like you hear about uh, if you see too much jitter interlacing on TV at high contrast rates, you, you know, it might induce a seizure in some, you know, uh, small <laughs> snippets of the population, you know. So now it's at a more natural frame rate, uh, which matches that of the original film. Um, and this product is called Rotic Love Live Live. And uh, we'll, we'll show you a little, a short clip of uh, our lead actor, Cam Clark, talking about the production here. There's some buzz going around that we might be uh, recording some material in which uh, Lancer plays an integral part. There's some found, lost footage as well as some new footage that's going to be employed in the project and kind of a tribute to uh, following through with uh, the last thing that Carl wanted to put together. Carl being a character uh, person had a, a great idea which makes Robotech Love Live Alive possible. This was something that Carl had in mind since uh, 1986. We had done our research and we thought that there was, there was some material in Japan that had never been brought over into the United States. And Carl uh, looked back on what he had done with Robotech and he said, well, let's do what we did with Robotech, is let's adapt the story, let's rewrite all the transitions to make it work within the Robotech universe, and let's do what we did with Dana's story, which is uh, one episode that was completely edited from scratch uh, to make it a transitionary episode uh, to tie the three series together. And he said, let's do a Dana story on Love, Love, Alive. Let's take it and let's make it longer and let's make it uh, a much more substantial story so it's not just a big long music video. So we have a powerful story underneath it and so that it has consequences for the characters. This is gonna be uh, old fashioned Robotech from the 80s and uh, we're very honored that this is gonna be uh, Carl's uh, final project, a wonderful, beautiful sayonara to the fans. Um, there are some people who actually saw Love Little Live before, and they were kind of skeptical of it being adapted into Robotech. They thought it was kind of light on material uh, as an OVA. And that, 
and in some way, uh, it is true because it was actually produced as a collection of mu music videos. What we're going to do is we're not going to just simply translate it. We're going to do what happened with the original World to Television series, is we're adapting it. And uh, it's being completely re-edited from scratch, and new material is being added to it. It's essentially undergoing the adaptation process that Robotech went uh, through, so that it's not going to follow the Mosquito storyline. It's going to be a new Robotech storyline. And uh, it's going to incorporate some of these scenes that we have produced specifically for this project. Uh, some of you who are familiar with Lancer's backstory will uh, recognize this uh, mecha. And uh, here's some of the work that had gone in recently. This is one of the joys of having Long Beach Comic Con follow San Diego Comic Con. You get to find out what happened since then. The stuff that the folks in San Diego don't know about yet, didn't know about. And uh, this is uh, uh, Greg Stegoff, the voice director of our project uh, working with uh, Dell Capture, the studio supervisor. And we actually tracked down some actors who had not worked uh, in decades. Uh, this is Susie London, the voice of Rook. She had not worked in voice acting for many years. People couldn't even track her down. Oh. And apparently, I guess, because she was a, a longtime personal friend of Greg Stegoff, uh, she doesn't do work like this much anymore. But I guess for Robotech, she was willing to come back out of semi-retirement for us. Uh, she's actually a, a very highly regarded uh, uh, phys uh, physical therapist, I believe, uh, at this time. And this is uh, Greg working in the, uh, the voice recording studio with his uh, own mother, who is reprising her role as the Regis. And, uh, okay, so uh, for those of you who got cameras running, 